Ooh, you are gonna want to watch this one before tomorrow, and no, it has nothing to do with how Trade Desk lost money and their revenue growth stalled from 35% year-over-year growth to just 8% annualized growth. Yet at the same time, despite that kind of badish news, the stock is up 16% in after hours. Makes sense but not what we're talking about. I'm also not talking about how Coinbase just reported revenue and reported that secondary sources of revenue all but evaporated. Their revenue fell over 60%. They burned $3.8 billion in cash and only have about $5.8 billion left. All at the same time while paying $750 million in stock-based comp for a company that's you know, go, going into the toilet. Oh, okay, okay, no, those are not the things that we're talking about. Those are just snippets of things that, that we covered this morning. Actually, uh, I shouldn't say this morning, it was like 30 minutes ago, right after earnings, in the fundamental analysis market closing live stream for course members, a link down below to get my daily uh, live streams. No, today we're actually warning about CPI. That's the consumer price index, and it is basically the measure of inflation. Let's get right into it. Take a look at this. This, my friends, is the bell curve for the CPI year over year. And I'll tell you, out of the entire year, six out of eight times, well, six out of the eight last CPIs, which goes a little bit into December, I've seen misses on these bell curves. That is, I see the bell curve, uh, like I see the uh, the actual um, like result of CPI come in like over here or over here. It's almost never here in the middle. It was a few times, but it's like economists have been pretty bad at getting CPI right. And so they've been missing like absolute crazy. And the expectation is that tomorrow's inflation numbers headline will actually come down from the 9.1% we had previously and go to 8.7%. There are 44 economists' projections in on this. The average estimate is that inflation will be 8.73%, right here in the middle of the bell curve. Here's the fact of the matter. The NASDAQ is testing the zero per, the old school 0% Fibonacci. Today, it's like the 38.2. Uh, that's because we obviously the NASDAQ continued to fall throughout the year all the way down to 268 uh, on QQQ, which is the ETF that tracks the NASDAQ. Uh, but anyway, on, uh, on the Fibonacci's, we are actually popping up against that 318 resistance again. And CPI, these numbers right here are dictating or we're going to dictate, I should say, whether or not we are actually going to be able to hold, get above this line and hold, or if this red line is going to end up pulling us back to a retracement back to under 300 QQQ. Potentially, if we get a really bad miss tomorrow, we could be right back into bear market territory around this 268 level for the NASDAQ. Very, very possible. And so everything comes down to 5.30 a.m. Pacific time tomorrow, this CPI report. Why? Why does it come down to this? Well, because the Federal Reserve has told us they want to see meaningful movement in both headline CPI and core. I'm going to explain those differences and show you the differences and the charts for core and month-over-month -month inflation in just a moment. But the Fed has told us, look, we need both to go down. We need headline to go down. We need core to go down. We know that we've had many reasons that inflation has been transitory for longer, right? We went from COVID, oh, it's transitory, to, oh, crap, Delta just pushed up inflation and led to more supply chain issues. Ah, crap, Omicron pushed it back up, pushed inflation back up, extended the transitoriness, and then we get war. Like, talk about some crazy events that destroy supply chains and lead to more inflation in the short term. And so it makes sense that the Federal Reserve is like, look, at this point, we have to fight inflation down either by being patient, which was the old school method, but now we can't be patient anymore because we've been patient too long. So that really only leaves the other option. And that is try to crimp the job market down and crimp demand down. The Federal Reserve tells us that their actions lag. And that's also very important to remember is that if the Federal Reserve's actions lag, we know that the Federal Reserve has to beat us up pretty good. And at some point, they're gonna go, all right, like, can we see the actual numbers yet? Because otherwise we're gonna look like fools. 
And this is tough because really the Fed's credibility is in question. That even though their actions lag, if tomorrow morning CPI comes in with a hot miss and we end up getting something like a nine plus percent read on CPI, something uh, actually nine nine percent is like over here. We're somewhere over here on the bell curve. The Fed's going to have zero credibility left that their actions actually lag. And, uh, and and they're going to be forced into potentially even an intra-meeting hike if there's a really bad CPI miss tomorrow, which is pretty bad news. That would be pretty freaking terrible uh, if they had to do that to maintain uh, any semblance of credibility left. Now, we do have two CPI reports, tomorrow being the next one, August 10th, and then we have another one the second week of September. So we get two CPI reports and another jobs report before the Fed meets again. But if this number comes in terrible, it gets spelled disaster tomorrow. So I expect a lot of people to be on standby with their finger on the pulse of the market tomorrow to dump everything or to potentially go all in. What if we actually came down to the low side and we had a CPI read of maybe even like 8.4% or we just met expectations. Of course, meeting expectations would be nice because we need some credibility back for the economists, but uh, we really want to cheat to the left side here. Now, what about that month over month and core? Let's briefly discuss that. And then I want to tell you about my opinions and sort of what's on my mind. But first, a quick message from our sponsor. But first, I want to thank today's sponsor, The Modley Fool. The Modley Fool Stock Advisor is a subscription stock picking service and has been providing expert guidance for over 20 years, meaning they've seen the market at both its worst and its best. The stock market is complicated and all over the place right now. Unless you want to be like me and researching the market for hours and hours every day, I highly recommend use the stock market choice. The Motley Fool. Over 1 million investors use the Motley Fool Stock Advisor, and it's been ranked as the number one investing newsletter by the Wall Street Survivor for five years in a row. Members gain access to their library of experts and stock recommendations, and the expert team of analysts recommend two brand new stocks every month and send it directly to their members' inboxes. Stocks go up and down, but the Motley Fool believes that over the long term, Anyone can build a nest egg they need for an early retirement. The Motley Fool is offering its top stock picking service to new members for just $79 a year for the first year for new members. That's 60% off their usual list price of $199. So visit fool.com slash Kevin to access this introductory offer for new members or click the link down below. Again, the link is down below in the description to start getting top notch stock picks sent directly to you by The Motley Fool today. Welcome back. So let's go back into this bell curve here. This now is the month over month expectation. You can see the bell curve wants us to see inflation come in at an estimate of 0.2%. Now, if you multiply that by 12 to annualize it, that means inflation would be moving at about a 2.4%. 4% rate. You don't exponent this. It's just multiplied to get the speed at which inflation is moving in the month. 2.4% uh, is the annualized expectation. Uh, the high is 0.4%. The low, the low folks, and I really like seeing this is actually 0%. Because if you want to go to the moon, you actually want to see this potential of having a negative month over month CPI. This right here would give the Fed so much credibility and markets would absolutely go nuts starting to pre-price in that the Federal Reserve is going to soften their stance and finally pause. And now they can say, see, this is why we can be patient. We can pause because inflation is turning down. This is best case scenario. We get some kind of negative on that month over month. That would be great. Now, core is expected to be a little bit higher, coming in at 0.5%, and that's because a lot, I would say a bulk, well, maybe not necessarily a bulk, but a lot of the reduction in inflation that we're expecting to see tomorrow is because oil prices have come down, gas prices and energy prices have come down, we've seen commodity prices come down, so we've already hit peak inflation for commodities and energy, and those are coming down. Now it's just a matter of, are they coming down enough to offset all of the other inflation that we're seeing? Well, here, when we uh, look at the headline a month over month with energy in it, we can see that energy brings us down potentially to zero to 0.2% month over month. We take out that energy anchor dragging down inflation, we are somewhere around 0.5% for the expectations. Now, if used cars, airfares, 
travel, hotels, owner's equivalent rents. If all of these moon, they have the real potential of actually pushing inflation up and us getting a miss on core, which would be pretty bad, just like a miss on headline would be bad. And that's because we have factors that still lag high inflation. So you get high inflation. What does high inflation do? Fed raises rates, which leads houses to get more expensive to buy, which actually drives rents up in the short term. And rent is one of the biggest pieces of our inflation CPI report. It makes up about 32.8% of the CPI weighting. And if we get a miss on owner's equivalent rents and rents pop up to like a month over month rate of 0.7.8, it could drag this entire thing up and we could get a terrible miss over here. One of the concerns that I have regarding these charts is some of these estimates, these economist estimates are so low that I feel like it's gonna be easy for us to beat to the high side, which does make me somewhat nervous for how the market is going to react tomorrow. Of course, I'll be live streaming uh, at 5.30 a.m. publicly, and then we'll go into the course member live stream after that. And we'll do some fundamental analysis and work on reacting to the market. But what's my expectation? How do I think, uh, or you know, what, how do I feel? Well, look, I'm bullish on America. I'm bullish on Train America. I've always been bullish on Train America, with the exception of like 45 days following January 21st. And I'm so glad I transitioned because, I don't know, there's some kind of saying out there. Maybe somebody can tell me in the comments what it is, but stupid people don't change their minds or fools don't change their minds. Uh, wise people look at the data and change their minds when circumstances change, right? That's very, very important. But I'm bullish on America, and that's why I'm back in this market. And so even though I have some cash left on the sidelines, it's not a lot. It's less than 4% of everything that I've got. And so for me, I really do believe that inflation will end up proving to be transitory in the long term. Commodity prices are showing it, energy prices are showing it, break-even bond yields are showing it, which generally precede inflation plummeting. It just hasn't happened yet though. And even though for seven or eight months I've been saying, hey, I really think you wanna pay attention to August and September to see the CPI numbers come down, I could be wrong. And here we are, we're in August and next month is September. These are the reports we've kind of been waiting for for quite a long time. So hopefully our patience pays off and the opportunity to have bought even below that 318 QQQ level or various different discounts we've had over the last few months, even some that are still available today, Maybe that was just a benefit for us to increase our ownership of companies we really believe in for the long term. That's what I'm doing. We also know that it's going to take a little bit of time for the job market to actually react to monetary policy and jobs tend to fall a few quarters after a recession begins. And when jobs start falling and inflation starts falling, all of it which happens with a the lag, then we might end up actually having a solidified bottom and a pathway back to the moon. But folks, we still have a big risk, and that's that consumer spending really does turn negative. We know we have two quarters in a row of negative GDP. Some of that does have to do with spending, but in general, we see consumer spending is still positive. It's just growing at a slower rate than it used to grow. Me, I'm bullish on the country. I believe that most consumers think the economy is in a terrible, in a terrible place, but their personal lives are better off and more wealthy than they have been since before the pandemic. That's my belief. There are certainly some folks on the very lower end of the threshold, probably your bottom quintile, and these are individuals who are struggling because food costs have skyrocketed and rents have skyrocketed. My heart goes out to those folks. As an overall basket though of consumers, I really still see growth. However, a big risk, a big, big, big risk is if we get things that happen to our companies like what's happening to Nike, where you get that negative year over year growth, well, when we might actually start seeing serious earnings revisions down, and that's actually what it's going to take for markets to move to lower legs. We are going to have to see inflation not come down, and at the same time, we're going to have to see revenue misses to the negative across the board of many companies, across uh, across the board, that's all, various different companies. Uh, but that's not what we saw in Q2 earnings, right? But that risk could still happen in Q3, Q4. And so if we have high inflation and negative consumer spending at lots of different companies in Q3, Q4, then we'll be in a stagflationary environment and we will have a worse stock market uh, in the second half of the year than in the first half of the year. That's not my base case scenario. 
I think there's about a 20% chance of the second half of the year being worse than the first half of the year. Could be wrong, but that's my opinion. I'm bullish, and I'm really hopeful that tomorrow we finally see that CPI U-turn begin. And if we don't, all it means is more patience will be required. Check out the programs on building your wealth down below, especially real estate, huge real estate opportunities coming up, and of course, stocks and psychology of money. And folks, we'll see you in the next one. Bye.